I'm so happy to be here today. This is Lauren Glendavidian, and we're at the Alternative Media Conference that's been sponsored by Goddard College. There was a conference like this maybe 40, 45 years ago that was held by the founders of the community and alternative media movement who inspired our work here at CCTV, Center for Media and Democracy. And then there was another conference in 2016. So this is the 2022 version. And today, CCTV is really happy to host this particular panel with um, Allison Seeger, who is the project director for Vermont Language Justice Project, and Dr. Jules Wetchie, who produces the African Variety Show. He is a producer on our town meeting television project, and he also, we distribute that program all across the state on his behalf, and hopefully Bruce Wilson, who also is a community producer here and a leader of Art So Wonderful, which is a youth, youth program, youth development program, so we're hoping that he will join us. So we're going to talk about these projects and talk about how we in are, are, are working together to reach people in all corners of our community, and not, and not only that, but people across the globe. And we, um, I'm going to start with Allison, who has uh, brought the Vermont Language Justice Project to CCTV about a year ago after starting the project at her kitchen table. And Allison, now we're reaching 16 languages with public health and other kinds of messages for Vermonters of limited in English proficiency. Uh, but why don't we start at the beginning of you at your at your kitchen table? And Bruce, welcome. We're so glad you're all you're perfect. Timing's perfect. Just unmute yourself, and um, we're going to start with Allison giving a little a little talk about how she started, and then we'll move on to Dr. Jules and yourself. Okay. So glad you joined us. Fantastic. I know. So check that mute button, but you're good to be muted for the moment. And um, Allison, tell us a little bit about how you started the Vermont Language Justice Project. And keep in mind, our audience wants to learn about the value of alternative media and perhaps how to think about these projects themselves. Sure. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, the project started in March 2020 as the country was coming to a standstill and lockdown. And I was really, I'm a social worker by training and work a lot with refugees and immigrants. I was really aware that um, all the information about COVID was only going out in English for the most part. And I was really concerned about my friends and neighbors who really weren't getting the information in their language about what was going on. Um, so I talked to a good friend of mine, Mohamed Jaffa, who spoke Somali and some Mai Mai. We wrote a script and he made a video in Somali uh, about COVID and what was going on uh, the very, right at the very beginning. We put it out on social media. We set up a YouTube channel. Uh, Mohamed sent it out to his Somali and Mai Mai speaking friends. Um, and at the time I was working uh, with Spectrum multicultural youth project. They were my downstairs neighbors. Um, uh, so between that project, um, they spoke probably about another eight languages. So we started uh, making videos in, in as many languages as we could um, to make sure that people who needed the information could get it. Um, uh, we set up a task force, which had a really long name because we just needed to do it. And so we called it the Multilingual Coronavirus Task Force, right at the beginning, it had over 40 community partners, uh, all people and organizations that were working with refugees and immigrants. Obviously, everything was online on Zoom at that point. Uh, we met twice a week, um, and we really just were talking a lot about how to outreach to communities that just didn't have access to um, English, didn't have access to the internet or, or, or media, really. So uh we would so i was working full time and doing this um just at home uh, i'm a filmmaker by training as well um and over the course of the next year we got some funding from the vermont department of health to pay our translators for the work that they were doing we got a group of 10 translators who spoke 10 of the most used languages in chittenden county and more than anything, I always really wanted to make sure that they got paid well. Uh, that was the most crucial thing because they, if we, without them, we couldn't do what we were doing. Um, and very quickly, our videos were going out all over Chittenden County, actually all over Vermont, actually all out over the country. 
Um, we made links with Burlington and Winooski school districts so that our, the sound files from our videos could, um, could be sent to the school districts through their robocall system. Um, so when you know, when you get a message from uh, from school saying there was going to be a snow day, you would also get a message in Burmese saying um, that there was a travel ban and you couldn't leave the state or you had to quarantine for 10 days when you came back. So we were really working with everybody in our community to just get the messages out as quickly and as efficiently as we can. What we saw that was really important was having local community leaders do the messaging so that they were trusted voices that people would uh, relate to and, and would feel comfortable with the information that was, was giving out. Um, I could, we got funding uh, a year ago. Um, and uh, should I leave it there for now? Or should I just yeah. finish? I'll leave yeah. it there now. Okay. I think that's a good introduction. And I think what's really important and unique about the project is what you just said, which is that the people who are translating the messages and communicating the messages on behalf of these public health information are trusted leaders in the community. Absolutely. And so as spokespeople, they have a role to play that you can talk about a little bit later in helping sure. to distribute the messages as well. Sure. So doc, Dr. Jules, why don't you, um, so thank you so much, Allison, for that start. And Dr. Jules, why don't you tell us about the African Variety Show and maybe there's, maybe, yeah, tell us how you got, decided to do this show, what led up to it. And um, I'll show a little bit of the program while you're talking. Okay, thank you so much for this uh, for a good opportunity. So first of all, in um, when we had the the the, pan, the, the pandemic, uh, the COVID nineteen. So as um, a public health uh, specialist and uh, also MD as a, a background from uh, uh, Africa uh, in Congo. So I. I did uh, realize that uh, there is, it was a, a, the lack of uh, good communication uh, to receive, um, to outreach the community. And also as a leader in the community, as the founder and the president of French speaking African Catholic community. So um, uh, the, there's one local radio, the community uh, radio of Burlington, behavior.com. So they sent a message to the priest to ask me if I was able to, to, to create one show, which is gonna help the community to have more training, education regarding the COVID-19. So I, I agreed it was in 2020. So this is the reason I start uh, um, uh, the first radio show, they call African Variety Show. So it, it, it's a kind of sharing the culture we, I train people, give education, uh, so um, the kind of health education and um, good health uh, communication, public health. So people, they should receive all uh, information regarding COVID-19 in several languages, because myself, I speak French, Swahili, Lingala, and also Kikusu and Kikongo. So I'm able to, to reach a, a large, uh, um, a large number of people in the community because we have most of immigrants here on the refugee. They speak Swahili, French, Lingala, Kikongo, also. So, and then after that, uh, I realized that uh, it was good too. So, people, when I'm talking, people they can see me. So, this the the idea. I I had to to join the the town mirroring TV uh, with uh, uh, my, my, my TV show. So it's very, very important because uh, most of people, they can, they can follow me in the simple way. They can have a good, uh, uh, a good health education uh, and the health, uh, uh, a good health communication because uh, most of people, they are uh, unable to understand English or to read. 
So it, it, it isn't possible someone who moved to America like he's uh, uh, 45 or 50 years to speak English. So as a leader, I understand because myself, when I was a general physician, I used to practice to the countryside. So African people, they prefer what they call the oral tradition. So to understand the leader is talking, everyone is hearing, uh, and the chief is talking, is the people they are listening. So this is the reason I said, no, I should create the one show, a radio show and TV show. So then I can, uh, I can leave the message and people they can listen because I select some kind of traditional music, African music and Congolese music, when people they are listening and then I can leave the message. And to the, red, to the TV, when they can see me, I try to do my best to explain to, in the simple word. We know um, there is a lot of work here. They translate stuff, but people, they don't have time to read. They don't have a, cap a capacity to, to understand. It's like today, I just came to the radio. I should explain about the election, the election guide of 2020, 2022. It, in French, it's a little easy, but in Swahili, there's many, there's like a f five kind of Swahili people that they are, they are speaking. It's not easy. Yeah, so this is the, I, I will say the core of, uh, of my show, my TV show to the, 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 the uh, town meeting TV. Can Wonderful. Dr. Jules, thank you. Well, when we come back to you, um, we'll talk yeah. a little bit about and Allison also, who's watching? Because you're making a show in a local setting, but it's actually also having a global impact. Yeah. Bruce, if you, um, can you take yourself off mute? Just hit that little um, button in the corner, it says mute. Keep go trying again, you see that in the bottom left corner, there should be a mute button. See it? Get off of it. There Ooh. you go, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, nice to see you, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, welcome. So glad. Thank you for joining oh, us today man. at the Alternative Media Conference. Man. Yeah. So um, you've been producing so with CCTV for a long time, and mm. you have been working. I think first it would be great to hear about your work with young people and why you think this is important for the future and how that you made the switch to uh, doing interviews and working with them and others on TV. Yes, thank you. Um, so first of all, I want to apologize for being a little late. And um, Allison, Dr. Jules, and LG, you know, I'm so happy to be a part of this, um, what we're doing right now. And so I think around 2002 or something, I started doing shows here on CCTV. And for me, I'm just going to talk about that for a second, one minute. It's so important that I do these shows because what it do is an outlet and I, the people that I represent or who I serve can hear about information about what I'm doing, as well as the guests that I bring on the show. So important that they know about all the things that they do and all the things that we do. And I couldn't do it. I just could not do it without CCTV. I, I, I said a hundred zillion times, and, and I'm so happy to be a part of CCTV. Um, so the youth that I work with, uh, primarily I started working with youth, um, in um, 1999, I worked at King Street Center and um, with Side Juvenile Rehabilitation. And I, I created um, a mentoring program for youth Bill Burlington. And, and so I learned a lot about youth. And so in most, of the youth, most of the youth that I worked with, they all were saying that um, they want to be empowered, right? They want to be um, um, help with their goals and aspirations. They want to be on youth boards and commissions and um, do things in the community. And so I agree with them, you know, I agree with them. And so um, I created a youth advisory board from primarily from at, before COVID, um, high schools and colleges around the state, primarily um, Franklin County, Tinney County, Rutland County. And so um, youth will always make decisions about programs, projects, and events that we do, and they still do. Um, it's so important that they have a voice um, for everything we do in this world. It's, it's so important. Um, and so I, I'm very excited about working with the youth and what we do. 
uh, we created um because you want to have um some place that they can be with themselves some place they can hang out where they can get educational different systems of drugs and account tobacco have fun events and things like that um i open up it's so weird because i open up um first i open up youth centers in in the largest malls in the state called the chill out center and um um, living rooms and Loft 89. Um, so youth, when they first gave the idea, it was in University Mall, I first opened up the youth centers. Um, they was like, yeah, we always hang in the mall, so we, we need a place in this mall. And I said, okay, let's go talk to the vice president of the mall. And sure enough, she said, sure, you're right. They should have a place and make decisions. So we opened up a youth center in University Mall, followed by the Burlington Mall, and then it's so weird because Rutland basketball team was um, in our youth center in, in um, University Mall. And they was like, God, we need some place like this in Rutland. And many people had asked me to do things in Rutland. I'm like, God, that's two hours away. I, I want to do things in Rutland. And and um, and I and it was guys said, we need one. Isn't Rutland? He's a basketball team. And I said, well, I'll try to get one open if you guys go on my youth advisory board. They said, yeah. So I talked to owners of the university, um, Rutland Mall, sorry, Rutland, Damron Mall. And they said, why well, certainly all the other malls um, agree that we're a good fit for any any mall or any place, youth. And so we opened up that place in 2010 and you ran that place and, and worked with our community partners around the state. And it was an incredible um, event for them then it's funny, Castleton University came to the university, I mean, Rutland Mall, and they said, we love this idea. We need to open up, we have a grant to open up a, a youth center somewhere, you know, in Fairhaven. And so I said, first thing I have to do is I need to have a youth advisory board because I won't make a decision about anything until I, especially about youth, until I created one. So we created one. Um, those was F thirty fives you hear coming over Ronuski. <laughs> we love them. But anyway, so we opened up a um, in Fairhaven. We opened up a, a youth center in Fairhaven. It's called Loft eighty nine, and um, youth ran that program. And we were on one of our community partners and um, Caston University, and so incredible for those youth. And we have them with the um, job, job selling, mentoring, tutoring job um internship things like that and which we still do and um incredible um to have youth, you you can't believe you've how they work together all different uh, types of youth working together um normally they probably wouldn't even be hanging out with each other you know but um we have over 50 awards for doing that and um now we kind of when my my board uh one of my youth board members said we need to change up so now we have art galleries in the university of Mocha, art so wonderful and so I still work with youth. I still work with college students. I work with our community partners. And um, I'm so happy. That's the best I can, the best that I am, you know, is working with the community, our community partners, and um, having a access like um, CCTV to be able to um, report what we do. We have a lot of types of shows, Chill Out Center, Loft 89, Straight Talk Vermont, United College Club, a lot of shows we, we have on CCTV based on the programs that we have and um, you for many you for facilitated them. We have incredible guests who talk about what they do. And it's so important that they talk about what they do, the guests. So people, our audience or anybody can understand things they didn't know about housing or they just goals and UVM catamount dancers, whatever they just don't know. And so are we very, so I am so happy to be a part of the CCTV. So I don't know what else you want me to say no more I can talk about where I came from. Well, I think it would um I think it would be good. Why don't we uh, this is amazing work that you do. And I think the role that CCTV and the community video plays is to amplify the work and expand the reach mm -hmm. of the work and also to provide another set of skills for the young people because yes. you just see them even in the short segment, just the poise and the confidence that they gain by talking and presenting themselves on television is another skill set. So I think um, what I want, when we come back to you, what I'd like to hear about is the programs that you've been doing recently, your own sets of interviews with people 
uh, from the community and how you're using that as an outreach tool in and of itself. But let's hear from Allison um, next about the, the reach and the role that these community translators play in helping to expand the audience and for the actual public health information that is useful to these populations in our state. Thank you. And um, Bruce, I wondered who set up that, that youth center in the University Mall. So thank you for that. I worked with youth and know many that went there. So thank you for doing that. That's awesome. I never knew it was you. Um, I guess in about August last year, uh, we were awarded some funding through CDC Disparities Grant. And uh, enough for me to quit my job at Howard Center where I'd worked for way too long, probably 23 years and actually uh, set up this project, um, the Vermont Language Justice Project. Um, and it's just kind of funny. I was, um, I didn't want to continue to work from home. I didn't know who could be a fiscal sponsor. And I was going to a birthday party and I was thinking, oh, my friend Megan's going to be there. And then I thought, oh, Megan works for CCTV. Oh, that would be a really good place to house this project. So over um, a bonfire on a Saturday night, uh, the beginning of September, I just said to Megan, who had, who knew about this project and was actually posting the videos actually on CCTV um, uh, throughout the whole of COVID, I just said, you know, we're looking for a home. Could you be our home? And I'm not kidding. Within three days, the turnaround was, yes, please, we want you, which was just really so awesome. And it's, it's such a great fit because, um, you know, we're making videos and... Um, our mission is to do outreach to the community and um it's 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 and it's about democracy it's about having everybody be part of the 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 discussion and knowing what's going on and um um so it just felt like a really great place to 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 sit um and since i started in november i started november the 1st um We've now had over 107,000 views on our YouTube channel. Um, and our reach is literally all over the world. Um, the when when the rapid antigen test video, uh, when the rapid antigen test came out, um, they were only in English. Like you'd get your box of things and it would just be in English and maybe Spanish. So that meant you had to read one of those two languages. So we felt it was really important to do these how-to videos of how to take a test. And there were so many different tests. Some were like for five minutes, you had to stir it and shake it and stick it up your nose. Some were for 20 minutes. So we did we did 16, we did, we did six different tests in 16 languages. And um, those have been viewed from Saudi Arabia to Costa Rica, all through South America, uh, Europe and the Middle East. Um, when the uh, when the refugees from um, and pro human parolees from um, Afghanistan started arriving, we increased our languages to include Dari and Pashto. Uh, we're now doing videos in Ukrainian with the new in Ukrainian influx of people. We're now making really good connections with uh, Migrant Justice um, and the clinics down in Middlebury. Uh, and we've also realized it's actually really important to do videos in English as well. Um, you know, not everybody reads and writes and uh, people need access to information um, in English. Um, the videos are all put on the Vermont Department of Health website. Um, and uh, that's not a video that's about us. That's that's an ad. <laughs> and we're now also doing videos um, in ASL as well. Um, what's really, really awesome, uh, two things is, well, you know, and the videos aren't complicated. This is my bathroom and this is my son. You know, it doesn't have to be like fancy big cameras and everything. It's it's just as important to get the message out. Um, as long as you can see what's going on, that's what is most important to us. Um, what's exciting now is that uh, with COVID kind of disappearing a little bit, we're actually able to do different kinds of videos. Um, we're, we're just finishing up a series of videos about um, how to access a pharmacy, how to get a prescription filled. We're doing videos on health insurance. What is health insurance? Um, 
what are all the terminology used in health insurance? What's a deductible? Um, we're doing a series of videos about, um, about mental health issues. Uh, uh, we're going to do some videos about housing. So now we're actually branching out into doing what my dream is really, which is my dream is everything. Uh, I feel like we need to be doing videos about everything that we as English speaking, when I say we, I'll speak for myself, but what I as an English person um, can just read about and access on the internet, which so many people that don't speak English or can't read or write in their own language don't have access to. That's, that's where we're going next. And really the world is our oyster. There's just so much more that we could be doing. Um, I was recently at a um, refugee health conference in Cleveland um, and this doctor who is the director of like 10 clinics in Seattle came up to me and she said, oh, you're the Modern Language Justice Project. We've been using your videos throughout the 10 um, clinic centers in Seattle um, because the information just is not available. Um, in anything other than English or Spanish. So that's a little taster of what we've been up to and where we plan to be going. And also, I think you may have mentioned, but it is worth pointing out is that people all over the world are using these videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Saudi Arabia, it's like there was, I, I feel like I know which rapid antigen tests are being used in Saudi Arabia because we probably got about 8,000 hits in one of our Arabic videos uh, about one of our rapid antigen tests. It's kind of crazy, really. Yeah, all over the world. Thank you, Alison. Yeah. Oh, can I, and one other thing that we're doing on CCTV is that when Jules um, puts his show out, for example, after his show, we'll put um, a French video about COVID or whatever it might be to follow up. So they finish watching Jules' show and then they'll watch the French version of our video or the Swahili version. There's a migrant justice program that that gets aired on CCTV. And after their program, we put up the Spanish um, the Spanish videos that we've been doing as well. I, that's fantastic. It's such smart programming. Thank yes, you. Yes, definitely. I'm glad we're doing that. Dr. Jules, um, you had talked about trying to share information with the local population about public health. And at the same time, you're covering really important issues that are happening in the Congo and political issues. And you have guests who come from the your country and talk about what's happening, who are have been working on democracy for a long time. So I wonder, maybe tell us about those guests and the purpose of your show in promoting a pro-democracy agenda. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank uh, Arison for the hard work. I know it's not easy, but it's a, a great job and uh, thank you there is a good result in the community thank so, you so the, the, your question is uh, uh, what i can say now when i'm doing my show it's like from local to uh, to global now it's like a kind of they call uh, global communication because a lot of people they can follow me uh, around the world even congo and everywhere so uh, last time I, I was in in, uh, in Congo, I went to, to visit my family for three weeks. So I think now, as uh, I know, uh, our TV, I never talk about the political situation to my show, but I have to, next time I have to do that because most of stuff I see in, uh, in Congo in Africa, the main problem came from here, United States of America, Canada, London, particularly for Congo situation. You know, everyone knows now there is like 20 years ago, they, they still uh, fight people, sexual violence. Everyone had Dr. Mukwege who received uh, the prize Nobel. We don't, we don't have a real democracy. You know the big country, the multinational companies, they don't, they, they don't, they, they don't give us the opportunity for a good development, a good democracy. So they put to the power someone who maybe he never been in university, he's not a good leader, 
So this is uh, a big problem we, we have, particularly in the east part of the DRC. So no one, we don't have people, they, they speak up even to um, uh, many, many, I, I'll say many channels like CNN. Uh, they never talk about Congo, but we saw now like uh, the problem between uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Everyone is talking about uh, Russia, Ukraine, but why not from Congo? This is not a good democracy. We need uh, more uh, assistance for uh, like America because America has a big power to Congo. We have a, a partnership relation. So for me, uh, if we, we, we need to have a, a strong de democracy, a good leadership and a, a, a good governance, they have maybe to, to put someone who study here, he understand American culture. And when he, 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 go, he, he goes like in Congo, he gonna uh, go, be a good leader, you know, because the, the problem is they used Rwanda and Uganda to destroy Congo, and the multinational company they took many. Uh, uh, we have many many uh, milices, and they took minerals and they fight people, women. In in my community here, we have some people who they used to live there. They, they had like uh, a sexual violence between uh, uh, facing the, their kids, you know? So uh, I think this is the best mean to, to, I can maybe in the future organize some kind of, uh, of show, maybe invite some uh, political Congolese to come to, to talk uh, about, about Congo because they, they plan, we plan to have the election next year, 2023 what we have to do. We have some message, maybe Joe Biden, the president or our, our leader here, they, they never know exactly what happened in Congo. It's a big problem. So hey. I think, I think uh, we have to do um, our best to talk, to speak up because Congo is the biggest country in the world. We have a lot of wealth, minerals, but it's the poor, poor, poor population. It's the reason last time when I went, we have some kids, they were born without clothes. So uh, my last show, when you can see, when I went in Congo, I brought some kind of uh, clothes to the kids, orphan kids. So it, it's terrible. It's terrible. Sorry, you have people that are watching in the Congo too, and all, I mean, yeah. you, have an, you have a global audience. How do you get the word out to them? How do you share the link to your program? So, in my my cell phone, I have I have uh, like uh, ten groups of WhatsApp. Uh, like uh, um, we have one group from uh, uh, physician Cong uh, Congolese physician. They live in Congo. I share with them. I have uh, some friend we used to study to we used to went to the high school. We have one group here too. All Congolese we have one one big group so we share the information. So and uh, sometimes uh, through the radio when I'm doing a radio show I'm doing Facebook live too. So yeah, after 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 my TV show I'm able to to share it with uh, people around the world. Yeah, and maybe they can watch uh, YouTube. And I have I think a good feedback. It's a, I mean, it's amazing when we look at the numbers and where people are watching. Yeah. You know, clearly you have a global audience. And I think what's important for people to understand in this as alternative media makers is that activism is at the heart of uh, true alternative media, social change and improvement and support for people that can benefit mm -hmm. is part of what we are. So we're really political activists first, and we've we've found video and radio as a tool for getting the word yeah. out. It's mm -hmm. one tool in the toolkit, it, mm -hmm. right, of social change. Yeah. And that's what makes us different than mainstream media. And actually, honestly, I think it's what makes us different from public media, is that we are first activists and 
we happen to have found video and audio as ways to activate. Yeah. And um, so Bruce, I wanted to ask you, so you have, again, you've used these, the tool of video, you have made many different series over, over the years, but most recently you're doing your own interview yeah. show and tell us about that program and how you're choosing your guests and why this is an important part of your work. Well, first of all, I want to say uh, to Allison and Dr. Jules, you guys are doing incredible work and uh, I want to be a part of any ways I can help and any ways you think I can help you, um, please um, ask me. Um, Dr. Jules, I want to come on your show. Yes. You know, and, and just, you know, whatever, you know, whatever topics you want to talk about that you think it fits me, please let me, allow me to come on your show, so. Yeah. Um, so, oh, wow. So we have been having a lot of shows. Um, but I keep saying, I don't know what year, 2002 or something. Like that. But anyways, um, so some, I don't know I was just writing a little bit while you was talking, but um, so our shows, um, normally from the, a lot from the beginning, I wasn't um, like hosting my shows. I would like you for, you know, to host the show or people who I work with because um, those are the people who I serve and those are the people who should really host the show. And this video you see right here is um, Elaine Wong. She's the city manager of um, City of Winooski. And, and so she's, she's there um, at um, Battery Park with me. Um, doing the show with me. Um, she's incredible. She, she want to reach, she want to meet everybody, she says. And so I, I like her style and she's very, she's very nice and approachable. Um, so, um, like she's one of the people that on the show, um, then we had, we had, um, um, the last show we had was on Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman, um, uh, and, um, at Vermont Public Radio, so Vermont Public now, Scott Finn, um, um, Vermont Federal Housing, um, Mara Collins, Winooski Superintendent, um, Burlington Superintendent, uh, Winooski Superintendent of Schools, Principal of Burlington High School, Mayor Christine Lott, Or Yang, Executive Director of, of hey, there's he goes, Zuckerman, my friend for many years, um, Bor Yang for um, a Human Rights Commission, uh, so Charlie Baker from in the kind of regional planning, Brian Pine, CEDO director. And then our shows are so wonderful, United College Club, Vermont Local Art and Music, Straight Talk of Mind. We have a lot of different shows um, based on the programs that we um, we have. And um, the programs that we have, like Art So Wonderful, um, was programs created by youth. You know, I, you know, and so we just put it part of what we do. And, um, and we still do them, like United College Club is another one that we've been doing since 1999. It was created by the college students, um, um, Mariam uh, Gramaski from Champlain College. And she's been on that show, that was like years ago. And her goal was to have um, um, UVM St. Mike's and Champlain working collaboratively together because they seemed they wasn't really getting along, they work collaboratively. She felt that if they all work together, that um, they can get a lot more done and being someone that's kind of the largest, you know, recognizable colleges that they will, people will support them. She was right. We still do United College Club, you know, when it's incredible things we do at UVM and Norwich, um, St. Michael's, you know, we, we love it. And her goal was to bring college students together when they can have um, make um, with with help them with their goals, dreams, and aspirations, while helping them with jobs, job shadowing, mentoring, and internships. Like before the COVID, I had six interns from all those colleges, and so we build them back up because, wow, they're the best that I can ever have around me. Um, these college students and they do incredible work in the community, and we help them with the things that they want to do. You know, in life, we just don't have them doing anything. We act, maybe they want to shop on our youth event or something, but then when they, if they want to be like, well, they're a doctor, lawyer, Indian chief, we know all those people. And so we help, we let them meet those people and help them with their goals. And that's what I'm so happy about, about working with colleges and high school students. And um, like I said, we have over 50 awards for doing it. You know, you know, people know us, you know, 
and then um all the art so wonderful stuff you probably see around burlington 60 60 percent of the murals and uh is there were art so wonderful in burlington and you probably we created art so wonderful boxes electrical boxes you probably see them all around us in our community art partners who um, create these boxes and the thing was by art so wonderful we don't we don't um our partners in South Burlington, they put um, murals over incredible uh, boxes, but we don't put murals over uh, uh, places that don't have graffiti on them because we have a graffiti abatement program. And basically, in my studies in 2002, if you put murals over graffiti, they seem to honor them, code of ethics, or, and so they don't go bomb the, what they call bomb the wall. And so, that, so we don't, Arts are wonderful. Don't put murals over places that have um, don't have graffiti on them. So we, you know, when you see Ron Burlington, all those cool ones, and behind Hanny's the graffiti art ones, and all those places is through art. So you'll see our you'll see our logo on all of them. And so, so you go. Bruce, yes, let me just ask you this question. I I have the sense, and I'm not sure if I'm right, that one of the reasons that you choose the people you interview in Service Rendered, which is your most recent series, is as a way, is as an organizing tool, right? A way to, to remind them about what you're doing with the youth and to elicit their support. Am I right? Is that yes. part of your thinking behind the people you choose to interview? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And um, yes, ma'am. And also, um, um, let the owners know exactly what they're doing because sometimes people just don't know um, about Vermont Public Radio or they don't know about Vermont Public. They don't know about leg how legislative work or how, um, you know, catamount dancers, you know. And so we help them. They contact us and we hook them right up to those people. And that's so important because a lot of people have goals and aspirations. They just don't know how to do it. They don't know how to get to that point. And so the, the people that we interview, they love us. They love um, service when they corporate. They love our programs because they they know about us and they know that we are to help people for real and, and we need their help. And so, yes, ma'am, we we definitely uh, bring them on the show so we can get support as well. You know, and um, and they do support us for many many years. I mean, many years, not just yesterday. You know, so I couldn't do this work without the people I serve. You know, no way in the world I can do it. You know. And for me, this is the best thing I can ever do in this world. And um, I wish I was to know, uh, can be better, be better, you know, parents with, my, with myself. But, you know, when I see people graduating from high school and then graduate from co college in, in part of our program, that's, I can't even tell you what the measurement is that is for me. We also created youth on boards in 2003. You sit on uh, police commission, planning commission, school board in the city of Burlington. We just redid the uh, resolution and we're about to start um, recruiting youth to be on these city right. boards. South Burlington adopted our res adopted youth on boards, Winooski and um, Essis. So now youth on boards is going to be expanded and we want youth on boards anywhere they can be. I talked to businesses and, and tell them, you, need, you, you got no youth on your board, you better get one. You know, you're trying to make decisions how to um the world your project is gonna look at five years you gotta talk to you first i mean because yeah. it's all about them so yeah well that actually is a good segue to our last question which is looking ahead to the future you know where do you see your project going and and why do you think that it's a good example for the folks that are watching at this alternative media conference maybe allison you could um respond to that as we start to wrap up <laughs> hmm where do i see it going i just feel like um there is nothing like what we're doing anywhere in the country um and we need to be everywhere we need to be doing videos on everything not just health but if you just think about health you know um if you what your doctor tells you you want a colonoscopy you know um if you don't read or write English, uh, you can't follow the instructions on even how to do the thing, let alone what it is. We need to be doing videos on everything when you can't drink the water in Burlington because a, water, a, 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 a pipe has burst. There needs to be a rapid response that send out messages, uh, audio messages in, in all the languages spoken. So 
where do I want to be in five years? I want us to be on that journey to making us, making it known that what we do is, is so important that it gets written into every aspect of local and city government, uh, state government, um, organizations that are helping people, social services, mental health. Um, it needs to be everywhere so that everybody has access to the same information. I really feel strongly that, you know, Vermont does a good job in welcoming people into the state and they talk about encouraging wanting refugees and immigrants. But then if we're not talking to them, if we're not sharing our information, we're perpetuating a system of inequality. Um, and that that's just not okay in my book. So uh, I don't know if I answered your question, but that to me is where I feel we need to be going and we need to bring, you know, stakeholders to the table um, to make sure that what we're doing actually increases. Right now, our money runs out in a year's time. So that's what we're also doing is figuring out how to get sustainable funding for what we do. Well, can I say something to Allison? Yes, Please. sir. Allison, thank you for saying that because I say that every day to somebody that we gotta make sure that you just can't make decisions about people Without you know, without them being around, helping you put a, some one word in what the, what it is. What's their goals and aspirations? How they feel? What's their dreams? What they need for themselves? Systemic stuff, right? They, people just can't do that without um, you know. You just can't put together some without asking the people who so called they serve, right? So thank you so much for saying yeah. that because it's just underscored everything I always you know say to people. All I was saying that to the mayor today. I had a meet with Mayor Christine today. At City Hall and City Planning, because I'm on that board, blah, blah, blah. And I was telling the same thing that we need to look over their mission statement from their chartered mission statement, 17, whatever that is. And then maybe we need to change some few words because Winooski has a 25, 20% of new Americans. And so I, we, I wasn't around when all these people, white people put together this um, charter about Winooski. So maybe. The, Everybody, when they first want to try to change something, they should look over their mission statement, their goals and objectives when they created the organization. And, and so that, that's that got to change from the first thing. So, Allison, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for saying that, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Dr. Jules, when you look ahead, I mean, you have any thoughts, any response to this question of including people in decision making? Certainly. And then tell us, as you look ahead, where do you see the African Variety Show and, you know, largely your work more going? So I think uh, we need more support to continue our, our goals because it's very, very important that if I'm talking to some friend, they live in other states, but here I think Burlington now is the best place because, uh, uh, because of diversity and uh, what we are doing. So I think as uh, Alison said, uh, public health is a big umbrella. Every, everywhere, touch um, all aspect of the, of the life. So we need to work more, we need to have more support to uh, extend to uh, the other series. Uh, why not all, all Vermont? Because it's very, very important. People, they cannot live here, but they they not involved, they not engaged. So this also we used to talk because I'm also a, a, a trust community voices a member of the city of Burlington. So we used to talk every day. So sometimes it's it's not good because this is our second country. This is our second life. People they have to have more information to be involved. How they can uh, improve their their life. Instead of like uh, they put stuff, they think like uh, everyone knows English, you know, it's hard. But with the hard work now, I think uh, Burlington, it's, uh, it's, it's more um, diverse than uh, the other state, the other series. So, yeah, we need more support and we're going to continue to work uh, more uh, to create uh, many projects which is gonna help a uh, uh, immigrant uh, community. Yeah. Dr. Joel, thank you so much. I'm, I'm just speaking as um, a person here at CCTV who kind of in a way visualized this, this 
project to be open for everyone. I'm, I'm so grateful for the work that the three of you are doing to blaze the trail into the future and the next generation of this work. It's, it's yeah. vital and it's very inspiring for me. So thank you very much. And um, Bruce Wilson, Services yes, and all your other projects, Dr. Jules Wetchy of the African Variety Show and mm -hmm. other projects and Allison Seeger of the Vermont Language Justice Project. Thank you so much for joining us here at the 2022 Alternative Media Conference supported in part and hosted by Goddard College. Thanks so mm -hmm. much for joining us. Wait a minute, I didn't get to say by my part what I think. How you know. I thought how, you did, but I want to hear more. No, no, right. how, why yeah. I see, how I see so. goes. Okay, first of all, um, um, so this is how I feel for me. So since the governor just appointed me to the Human Rights Commission, I'm a commissioner. Uh, I sit on the, um, I'm a commissioner for in inclusion belonging for the city of Winooski. I'm a commissioner for Chinna County Regional Pl um, Planning. And uh, um, I sit on the board for um, Justice, Equity, and Diversity for Green Mountain Transit. I sit on the Winooski School District um, Anti-Racism Committee. And so for me, so some other things I, I'm a part of. For me, it's about less diversity, equity, inclusion, or justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So let's get the people who look like me a part of making decisions about what's going on. So I'm very strong on, on that. And that's for me, that's what I'm doing right now. And that's what I see my work supposed to be. Um, I, 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 this is the best I can be, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to work with everybody. You know, Allison, you got a hundred some thousand hits. Dr. Jules, you around the uh, country. Listen, you know, I'm always, in, and LG will tell you, I'm always open for opportunities to work with people, you know, like to synergize, collaborate and be proactive, you know what I'm saying, with everybody that I know. So I want to work with you guys. And, and she will also tell you, that when I say it, I will be contacting you about it. So thank you. That's that's where I'm at right Thank now. you, Bruce. Hi, <laughs> Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great way to wrap up. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Bruce, for your work and all of you. It's been yeah. a pleasure. Have a great yeah. afternoon.